All right, you're live. All right, perfect. <clears throat> All right. Welcome, everyone, to this NFL Draft Bible Player Spotlight Edition. With myself, Ryan Roberts, Rising Draft on Twitter. Please follow everything NFL Draft Bible, NFLDraftBible.com. Check out the Twitter page. We're bringing you everything and anything you need to know for the 2021 cycle, the 2020 cycle, whatever cycle you need to know about NFL Draft-wise. We are here for your service. I have a young man that has been affected obviously by this off season of, you know, pro day cancellations, the coronavirus pandemic, everything I know has been very tough, but he has put himself in the right situation here. I think just looking at some of his past accomplishments, as well as navigating this off season, the best of his ability. I have Sam Taylor, who is a linebacker out of lion college, Sam inviting you to the show real quick, man, say hi to the folks. And I really appreciate you just taking some time today to talk with us. How's everybody doing? I appreciate you having me. Absolutely, man. So I'm looking at some of your particulars, Sam. Originally Sugarland, Texas, Lyon College. Let's start there because I know I see 98 tackles this past year, 12 and a half tackles for loss, 99 the year before, 15 and a half tackles for loss. The the uh the the um sorry, the program record with 16 tackles in a game as well against Wayland Baptist. So obviously a very accomplished career. Talk to me about from Texas over to Lyon College. Talk, uh, how, how did you become in contact with Lyon? Why were they the best fit for you? And just give me a little dive into your career and some of your favorite accomplishments. Um, well, honestly, I'd say uh, whenever I was coming out of high school, I was a bit of a spoiled kid. Um, I was doing really well, but I was, you know, the size that I am. Um, so I was told that I wasn't going to be recruited for any big D1 schools or anything like that. Um, however, I was unacceptive of that and thinking that I would either get a scholarship to the SEC or nowhere. Um, so I actually took a gap year in between uh, high school and college because I wasn't planning on continuing my career. But then once football season rolled around again, I just I really missed it. So I went ahead and just sent out my film to a bunch of different schools. Uh, I particularly shot for the NAIA because um, I knew that most of my chances in D2 and lower D1 had passed up, um, especially having taken a year off. I, I was rusty, so they wouldn't really uh, be as interested in me anymore. Um, so one of the schools that I sent my film to was Lyon College. Um, and the coach there went ahead and responded. And he was just like, yeah, come on down. Uh, we'd be we'd be happy to have you. Um, so I showed up there. Uh, the next couple of years, trying to get a little better, um, trying to get out of that rust and get back into that groove that I used to have. Um, didn't really play for the next two years, and then we had a uh, coaching transition to Coach Crehan, who took over as a head coach um, and brought in a whole new coaching staff. Um, and about Two to three weeks later, I was our starting linebacker. Um, that was the start of my junior year. Ended up playing, obviously breaking the school record for most tackles in a season in a single game. Um, and then the next year, I ended up uh, – they actually didn't record me for a few of my tackles that I got. Um, and I went – like, I, I went back and watched all the film and submitted it to my, my AD and my, uh, asked them to submit it to the SEC – SEC, SAC, um, so that they would correct it because it would have rebroken my record with uh, 102. Um, but I never ended up hearing back about it. Um, so I would say that would be another one of my accomplishments that just isn't known because it, it never got corrected on the stat sheet. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, being voted team captain this last year was a huge honor for me, just the fact that those guys – um, likes me and respected me well enough to think that I should be one of the ones to lead them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just, just being able to go out there and, and make plays. I love it, man. And that, that's obviously some great accomplishments. I, I love the fact of kind of like what you were saying, the year off kind of, I don't know if it reaffirmed the love of football or just made you miss it terribly. Talk to me though, cause you're a Texas guy. So, cause I know that they breed them differently down there. Talk to me about when the love for football really began and just what it's like being able to play football in Texas, maybe growing up a little bit. It definitely did reaffirm it. Um, the interesting thing, though, on that is I've actually lived in eight states, moved 24 times. Um, 
so I didn't grow up playing football in Texas. Um, I grew up, I started playing in Colorado, Denver, Colorado. Okay. Uh, and then I played two years in Springdale, Arkansas um, with Shiloh Christian. It's a high school down over there. Um, and then I went down to Houston for my junior and senior year of high school. Um, but no, fourth grade was definitely when the love of football started for me. I actually, uh, I didn't want to play football starting out. I was a soccer guy. Um, and my dad convinced me to, to try it just one time. And after that season, I never did anything besides wrestling after that. I just, football was my, football was my sport. I love it, man. I love it. And it's, it's, it's been like that for myself as well. It's been the passion since I was nine years old. So I'm right there with you. And obviously we're talking about this because, you have the dream of playing professional football. I'm sure whether it is NFL, CFL, whatever it is, I know when I was growing up, that was the dream too, you know, getting paid to play a, to play a child's game. That is the absolute dream, man. So I'm right there with you. And I want to ask you a little bit about the off season. I know it was a difficult one with a lot of things being shut down, pro day cancellations, the pandemic talked about that a little bit. Let me hear from you, Sam. How do you think that you've been able to tackle this offseason the best that you can? What were some of the toughest parts? And then maybe what are some things that you're proud of that you were able to put it on, on your resume this offseason? Honestly, I would say the toughest of all of it is just the, the closing of weight rooms. Um, I, I haven't been able to do, get my weights in since everything shut down. Um, so I've been having to just do body weight stuff for everything. Um, and granted, that's that's good for staying in shape and building definition. But as far as bulk goes and getting stronger, getting heavier, not so much. Um, but on the opposite end of that, one of my biggest accomplishments of the off season, I would say would be uh, I've gained 30 pounds this, this past season. I was 185 when I was playing and got wow. all those, all those other uh, accomplishments. Um, but I went down and uh, I sat down with my head coach at one point. Cause he actually spent, um, I think 16 years, if I'm correct, in this, uh, coaching in the CFL. Nice. Um, so I asked him what he thought, if he, if he thought I had any real chance of playing there, because I knew that I'm not really cut out to go make it in the NFL as much as I would like to be. Um, and his answer to me at the time was just, if I could, if I could go ahead and gain about 20, 25 pounds, I'd, I'd have a legitimate shot at doing something like that. Um, so, and since then I've gained 30, I've kept my, my, uh, my agility, my ability to change direction on a dime. Um, my speed has gone down a little bit just because I haven't been able to get any of that, uh, resistance work in that I usually do to keep it up. Um, but I'm staying in shape, uh, as soon as these weight rooms open up full time again, I'll be able to get back in there, um, and start getting stronger and faster again. Just mm -hmm. bringing that time back down because my my fastest time was actually a, a four point six, um, and obviously I've lost a little bit of that with the weight. Um, but now that everything's starting to open back up, my hope is to be able to get back down there. Yeah, yeah, and obviously it's it's a tough it's a tough um, maybe trade off a little bit, you know, getting to that size, losing a little bit of speed, but. We're talking about production, which you obviously have. I know you talked a little bit about your size. I know you're a little bit of an undersized guy that's played off-ball backer. When you were at Lion, let's talk a little bit about schematically. What type of defense were you guys running? Were you were you a Mike in a 4-3? Were you guys playing a 3-4 a system? What was the system at Lion? Uh, we were a 4-3. Uh, I was just kind of – well, sorry, not a 4-3. We kind of switched in between. We had different packages, but the general one that we ran would be a four-two-five. Um, we would just have a mic and a wheel. I played our wheel linebacker, um, mm -hmm. and then just kind of subbed out. If we went with more of a safety package, I'd be our nickel back. If we uh, went with just a single linebacker package, which was called Monster, I I'd be that guy. Um, so basically, I was just kind of put in there. Um, either at inside or outside, just wherever they needed me out, out on a receiver up on the line um, and, and just kind of going at it. I love it. So I, I guess, I guess it can be safe to say that Sam Tower, uh, sorry, Sam Taylor is a very versatile football player to say the least. Yes, yes sir. That's awesome, man. So playing some inside, playing some, it sounds like you're playing on the slot a little bit, doing things in pass coverage, playing some safety. It even sounds like rolled down a little bit for you, Sam. 
what was the emphasis this offseason with the opportunities you were given? We're going to talk about the, the American National Combine that you were able to attend, but every chance that you've had to get eyes on you, what has kind of been the message that you want to prove to teams that are evaluating you? Honestly, my main message would just be that even if uh, I don't necessarily seem like it right off the bat, I can be of help. Uh, I feel like I've proved that time and time again because growing up I've always been – one of the smaller guys, and yet I've always found a way to produce. I've always found a way to get things done on the field and be one of the main guys out there. Um, just somebody that if it's crunch time, you're going to send Sam Taylor in. Um, so even even if I don't necessarily seem like that guy when you're just looking at me, that that would be what I feel like I've proven over the years is that I can do that. Mm-hmm. Hey, man, you can't, you can't, you can't have any um... – you can't make any argument against production. That's the end of the that's the end of the conversation. You put on the film. You have had two years, ninety plus ta- ninety plus tackles, like you said. You probably should have had over a hundred this year, which is a, obviously a ton of production in the conference that you were able to play in. Talk to me about the ANC, the American National Combine. You went obviously the St. Louis one, which is providing opportunity to get some verified numbers for some guys in your similar position. What was that experience like? How do you feel like you were able to compete on that day and just kind of overall a point of emphasis on the experience there? Uh, Actually, it was a wonderful experience. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I felt like I got some good insight, got to work with people that really um, knew what they were doing, which in in the NAIA is not as common as you would hope um, because a lot of the coaches there are ones that are just kind of starting out. And don't be wrong, my coaching staff for the past two years at least has been incredible and helped me to get up those numbers um but it's just it it is also nice to be able to talk to other people that have had uh even more experience or different experiences that can help you further um as far as the actual competition goes I feel as though I did uh did well in the drills um like I said I've been working on my being able to continuously stop on a dime um I still have that ability I can just I, I can change directions like that um the thing I would say that I need to work on would just be my hands and then my just overall flat out speed. And other than that, I feel as though I did pretty well. That's great. That's great. I, I know you were a guy that was mentioned to me because David T- Turner, who does a lot of things for NFL draft Bible is the pro liaison for the agency combines. And I know obviously you're working with a part of the NFL draft Bible, a part of the free agency database, for Marvin Jones. Talk to me a little bit about, um, maybe how you kind of became came in contact originally with Marvin and just what you think that that is going to be able to provide for you so far. Uh, the original way that I came in contact with him is uh, I actually got an email from him um, saying that he had talked with some of the coaches that were at the ANC combine and that uh, they uh, told him that I'd be a good fit for overseas ball, German league, Finland, something like that. Um, those were the two specifically that he mentioned to me and just, told me that if I were interested to get back to him and honestly even if it if it weren't being paid I just I want to keep playing football it's just it's it's my thing I love doing it so I immediately messaged him back and I was like absolutely tell me what I need to do um and I think he's gonna help be able to help me get to that um he has good good uh well I'm spacing on the word but contacts yes thank you he has yeah. good contacts um, and that he'll really be able to help me get that next step. Yeah, absolutely. It's been, it's been an absolute pleasure to learn from Marvin so far that he's been working with us. He's running a great service there with the database, a part of the NFL Draft Bible, and I know that they're going to provide you the best opportunity, which is all you're looking for. And, Sam, if I had to ask you that moment, whenever it is, whether it is over overseas in Europe, Canadian League, whatever, the final – the next – I shouldn't say final, the next – opportunity for Sam Taylor is what is that going to be like? Cause you talked about just playing football, but the opportunity to maybe be a professional athlete is something I'm sure has been a dream for a long time. What would that blessing be like? It, it absolutely has been. Um, I've, I have wanted that for, for years. Uh, it, it would honestly be incredible. Um, the, the best things in my life are, are always my, my pups, um, just my, my animals. I'm a very big animal lover. Um, and this would be right up on, on the same level as them. It's, it's just, as far as my dreams go, it has always been just taking care of them, making sure that they're good. And then also playing football. And it's been, 
basically the only thing I've really been working towards in the, in the past four years. And just to see all of that uh, accumulate and just finally come to the, the end where I'm able to actually take that step and be a professional player, it, it would just, it would be incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it seems like just from everything I've read about you and just listen, you talk for these last few minutes, you're a guy that no matter what a team is going to ask of you, I'm sure you're going to do what they tell you to do, whether that's linebacker, safety, special teams, whatever it is. You seem like you just love football. So sell me real quick on this last question. The moment that Sam Taylor enters the door of a professional football team, whatever league it might be, the moment that you step foot on that field, what are they getting in you as a player and as a person? Uh I would say the ultimate team player, like you said, I'll do literally anything that's asked of me, even if it's switching over to offense. I, I honestly could care less just as long as the team gets better, as long as I can help out. Um, as long as I can keep playing the game, they're just, as soon as I step on that field, it's just going to be finding my way of producing. Mm -hmm. and helping well, out. Absolutely. So that's going to end this interview here with Mr. Sam Taylor, linebacker, safety, wherever you need him, just get him on the field out of Lion College. Sam, really appreciate you taking some time today, man. Wishing you the absolute best, and I appreciate you just sharing your story with us. Yeah, thank you very much. Again, I appreciate you having me.